and that was the pitch for. <laughs> oh my God! Wow, that was crazy. Thought... So that was the that was the pitch for elderly cricket encounter. <laughs> so I beat that suckers. Well, this week on backward compatible, Jim, Doc, Chris, and Nick play a series of game shows for some holiday fun. Plus, Hearthstone, Kobolds, and Catacombs, randomizers for The Legend of Zelda 1 and 2, and news on the NBA 2K League. The BackwardCompatible.com podcast starts right now. Hello, Backward Compatible listeners, and welcome to episode number 118 of the Backward-Compatible.com podcast, Games and New Media with a Splash of Academia. As always, I'm Chris, and I'm joined today by Jim. Ho, ho, ho. And we're joined by Doc. Hi, everybody. And we're joined by Nick. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and uh, we got the whole family together once again for this holiday special edition of the Backward Compatible.com podcast. Keeping up our uh, sort of holiday tradition, we like to sort of keep things loose and easygoing. And so we decided that uh, instead of doing a meaty topic this week, we're going to be doing a series of game shows. Uh, several of them, Jim's prepared for us. Uh, one of them, Doc has prepared for us. Wow, that makes me feel inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you said several, it's really just three <laughs> from me. Yeah, three cuts of several. So, okay. Yeah, several three. Sure. And how many did you prepare, Chris? A trio. Uh, I started on one, but I'm going to have to save it, unfortunately, for our year in review. So look forward to the super secret game show that'll be coming uh, next episode. Excellent. Then I don't win, but I'm not the loser. There you I go. definitely didn't even try. So so Nick's the loser. Yeah. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but first, we have some opening segments for you, including the button mosh. Get ready for the button mosh, where the crew jumps in on the video games they've been rocking lately. So Hearthstone came out with a new expansion recently called the Kobolds and Catacombs. Yes, it did. You can uh, notice that it might have something of a Dungeons and Dragons sort of vibe to it. Oh, I totally missed that. <laughs> and the uh, do they do they spell catacombs with a K? They don't actually. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. It is. But the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons definitely comes through in the sort of theme of this. It's all about uh, delving into tunnels and uh, gathering treasure and stuff like that. And yeah, actually, there's no story at all, and it's randomly generated. <laughs> they have. Uh, they have a really cool new mode called Dungeon Run, and I actually think that uh, while they've always had, well, they haven't always had, but they've had for a long time single-player kind of adventures, but some of them required, you know, either purchasing them to unlock all of it, um, or the most recent one before this, which was in the uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion, had, um, it was like a super challenge mode. It yeah, wasn't no really um, the most I actually, accessible thing. I just like that one mm-hmm. deeply, but um, then I, I am one of the dirty casuals whenever it comes to uh, Hearthstone, so... Yes. Yeah, they, they've always encouraged you, for example, to, when you're fighting against a particular boss, um, build a deck around beating that boss. Yeah. But what was kind of yeah. nice is in the previous ones, you could sort of tell what sort of deck this is. So it's like, okay, I can beat this with an aggro sort of deck, or I need to have a control sort of deck. And you can kind of adapt um, the same deck to different situations. Yeah. This one almost requires you to do a very specific deck every time. Yeah, and then you, you find yourself deleting decks, so you have the space. And uh, it's just, uh, <laughs> no, it was awful. But we're not talking about Kobolds and Catacombs. We're talking about the last one, which mm-hmm. is Frozen Thrones. Yes. Kobolds and Catacombs. I actually think uh, if you've never played Hearthstone before, this might be a great chance to get into it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, because it's this really cool single player thing where they give you a boss and it's kind of themed after stuff like Dungeons and Dragons. So the first thing you're going to fight is a giant rat. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much <laughs> always what you fight first. No, no. Sometimes you, you fight a little imp. Oh, do you? Yeah, there's flame imp and things like that. There, there are some uh, like rare, rarer bosses that uh, when they come up, it will give you special rewards and stuff like that. When That's you beat true. Them. But it's basically like if you think of it as kind of a boss gauntlet in a way. You fight these enemies and they progressively get, you know, more starting HP. You actually start off with less starting HP than you normally would yourself. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you only have 15. Mm-hmm. You've, only, you've also got kind of like a smaller deck, a very specific deck, and they give you the starting deck based on your class. And so you don't have to build any decks or anything like that. Right. They provide everything for you, which Love is really that. nice. Love it. Um and then what will happen is you, uh, after you beat a boss, they'll give you a chance to kind of like open up some treasure, which sometimes will be like a super powerful card that gives you like a special passive ability or something that benefits you at the beginning of the mm-hmm. game. Or um, 
you can actually pick out what cards you want to add to your deck. So you can start to build toward yep. like, I want a really balanced thing that can fit any situation or I'm going to like, say for example, if you're playing warrior, I'm really going to focus in on berserk here yeah. are minions and, and it's so themed that, too so mm-hmm. you're, you're going to get three cards and it's like um i want to focus on heals or mm-hmm. i want to focus on beasts or i want to focus on cthune mm-hmm. and and i love that mm-hmm. i think that's really really well done uh, and honestly it's helped me with building my regular decks sort of thinking of it in terms of sets of three right yeah um which i'd never really done before mm-hmm. and so that's kind of exciting um so if even if you know you want to do kind of a classic type deck, you know, Oh, I'm going to go with Murloc face or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but you don't have that one specific card. Well, don't just switch the one card out, switch three of your cards out in a set that seemed to, to sort of take your whole deck in a new, new, new direction. Mm -hmm. And, and since you're required to do that for Cobalt and catacombs, by the time you get to the end boss, um, you, you've really got a sort of a theme going. Mm-hmm. It's neat and you can't switch it out. I mean, it, the further you go, mm-hmm. it's like you're down deep in the depths of the dungeon mm-hmm. and you can't change things. Yeah. You either kind of double down on the theme you're going for, or maybe partway through you start to like, I'm going to go for a hybrid sort of thing. Right. Where I've got like half it, and half. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it's really awesome. It really captures that sense of progression, mm-hmm. the bosses and you get more powerful as you go along. And, uh, as you said, doc, you, you know, the, the treasures really help you customize your play style for very that much, run. Very much. Um, and then you'll sometimes run into that boss where like, well, the thing that I had built for it wasn't really well suited to take on this boss, but you can sort of keep that in mind going back. Okay. If I hit this boss again, I'm going to make sure I'm going to want to make sure that I have this sort of counter to it. Okay, so confession time. Mm-hmm. I have actually spent over 20 hours on this now. Oh, wow. Literally just this one play style. Um, I absolutely love it. It is really, really fun. I still haven't beaten it yet, but mm-hmm. I got to the very last uh, number of times, and my best run, I got this, um, is a loot dragon, down to five health. Mm-hmm whenever he finally nailed me and had I used one different card, you know, in one play, I made one little mistake basically in that. And I, I could have, I could have beaten him. Mm-hmm. So I was very, very sad, but I, I am not discouraged. I am actually encouraged to want to go back and continue to mm-hmm. play. I've done my best with warlock, which is a class I very rarely play. I oh, dislike nice. damaging my own character, mm-hmm. but you, you throw a bunch of heals or, or demons or something like that on him. And it, it's great. Cause then you can just power through it. Mm-hmm. Um, my my absolute favorite though is to go in with the priest. Mm-hmm. Um, I I also liked playing with the hunter and, and going beast. I thought that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've I've not even tried all the classes yet, and so um, I'm having more fun with this. And I actually have gotten back into Hearthstone. I have lost sleep over this game. <laughs> it's crazy. I did not think that was going to happen. Yeah. So if either you've been uh, away from Hearthstone for a while or you're interested in trying out this specific mode, I think that this mode alone is worth giving the game a shot, I would say, uh, because it does have such great replayability and it really is well designed. I think it's really yeah. well done. My one complaint is that um, you're not really progressing a character as you play it. Yeah. Um, you can't make progress toward quests unless it's specifically yeah. for kobolds and catacombs. But that's normal. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, you know, the, the single player stuff has never been for quests. Right. Um, and so, um, in that sense, I think that, that there could be more of a connection to the main game, but honestly, like I said, it has taught me how to build a deck Mm -hmm. better. Right. Um, you're starting to think about, um, what's the term for it? Gamification. Not gamification. Um, It's game of synergy. It's it's gamified the gamification. Yeah. No, you, you, uh, Jim said just the right word. It's it's synergy. Um, and how the cards enter, interplay with each other. Yeah. Let's all go on a nostalgia trip to see what we can learn from games of the past. So I've been uh, pl- taking a trip down uh, memory lane this week. Uh, been looking for forward to playing some more Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2 as well. And I decided to try out some randomizers. And if, if people, you aren't aware of what these are, essentially, these are actually two different people. Um, the... Legend of Zelda randomizers, just if you search for uh, Google Zelda randomizer, you'll find the site pretty quickly. And essentially what it is, is it doesn't change the overworld itself. It's the same overworld, but it changes the location of essentially everything. So the the hidden secrets, like the caves with, um, you know, shops or where they, that jerk of an old man that steals your money or, you know, the free money, stuff like that. Everything, including all of that and the dungeons are shuffled all over the world. So, yeah, and the I think, I, I, think I saw places. this on a live stream once right. where and it was, he went into the 
you it's dangerous to go alone take this cave and the first thing he encountered was like the seventh dungeon or something like that right although this this time you can actually customize it it's really neat what you do is you um, it gives you this kind of this like front loader and you can decide how random you want it so mm-hmm. i chose to still um have the sword at the at the starting point because i still wanted to have that experience of finding the sword and then exploring the world like i did when i played the first legend of zelda not really knowing where anything is mm-hmm. And it's been a very interesting experience. They jumbled the the um, enemies as well, so each screen has different enemies. Um, they, they don't mix the overworld and the underworld unless you want it to, which I did not. And they also changed the the rooms inside the dungeons, but not the actual layout of the dungeon. So it's got the same shape, but the rooms are all different, huh, and they might have different enemies. And so I, I've been exploring, and it's, it's 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 kind of giving me more appreciation for that. Um, designer's touch obviously because yeah, there's yeah, yeah. it's it's both refreshing and kind of addicting but also obviously some of the design choices which aren't really choices that's random uh-huh. are sort of killing the experience for example i found three of the dungeon entrances thinking it had to be something interesting and every time it was that jerk of an old man that would steal my money <laughs> and um he's kind of he's just become my bane and i can't find the first dungeon i've looked everywhere i've cleared dungeon like three and five and two and i just found them in random places like completely absurdly random places huh. and there's actually hints um it's interesting you can turn on hints that are helpful or that are community or both and so it's basically the community uh, and it kind of runs an algorithm, obviously, um, in which it kind of says, for example, it, it tips you off for how close a dungeon might be or who might be the boss of that dungeon or what item might be there by kind of mixing and matching words like um, dig dogger, you know, creeps with the the master key or something like that. You know, it's got like kind of a mixture of, of words and it forms sort of a sentence. <laughs> as it were like a, a doesn't really mean a whole lot well, to be fair the original the text in, in zelda was and, almost sentences as well exactly so. <laughs> exactly and so it's, it's it's actually a really it's, it's a really interesting experience but also um and surprisingly not as difficult as i expected and one hmm. of the reasons why it's not that difficult is because for a couple of reasons one the heart containers are jumbled so in when you go into a dungeon any room if you clear it might be the room that has the heart container so it's not necessarily the boss. Oh. And so far, it's never been the boss. So I'm able to get, like, one room, I was able to c- clear a bunch of ropes, which were the snakes that kind of charge at you, and I got a heart container hmm. from that dungeon. And the second part is that the Triforce room is moved around, too. So in one of the one of the dungeons, I went in, and I found the Triforce almost instantly and basically <laughs> beat the dungeon. Yeah. So little things like that. But then on the other hand, you have really difficult things. Like I went into a room with a bunch of poles voice before I have the bow and the bow and literally couldn't kill them because I just had the wooden sword. So I just had to skip that room. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of little things like that, 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 but it's still, it's still fun. And um, what I like about this randomizer is that the person behind it, and I, and I tried to look it up. I couldn't quite find it, but um, I'm not sure if he's actually said um, his or her name. I'm not even sure who specifically it is, but um they've guaranteed that each seed of the game they call it a seed when you generate your version of the you know game it's kind of your unique random version Mm -hmm. and they say that each seed is beatable that's what i was going to ask right Uh, because you know the core principle of design is doors before keys Mm -hmm. and it's not just um to do with the mechanics but it's to do with interest and so oh i found a door how do i get through it well if you find the the key before you find the door, the the key becomes the door in principle yes, yes. and the door yeah. becomes the key. But the, the problem with it is that mechanically, if the door or if the key to that door is literally behind the door, it would be unbeatable. Right. And in this, and this one, it's, this one is completely, so far it seems like it is beatable. I'm just not able to find certain things that I want easily, which makes it fun to explore. Yeah. Now, it sounds like you're playing Zelda for the first time. That's what basically. it feels like. Now, is that the intent? I mean, is yes, that, that is the, the that is the the whole point is it, that's the intent. The, of course, the thing that I don't like are because of how random it is, you don't get those hints that the other one gave you about I shouldn't be here yet. Like, um, for example, I walked um, one one room over from the starting area to my left, and I already ran into blue lionels. Oh, goodness, <laughs> and that was not because that, that there was a high level dungeon there. Because there, there was actually there was a dungeon there. It was the level two dungeon. Mm-hmm. So there's 
they could have maybe had some sort of a connection between the boss out out front of the dungeon and around the dungeon with how diff what dungeon level it was yeah like they did in the original um but these are minor complaints and it's something that i think is is fun at least for the novelty of it even if even if it might be um, obviously not as good as fun of an experience as the original um the other one i wanted to talk about too was was the zelda 2 randomizer which is not made by the same person and it's actually become quite frustrating and i love zelda 2 and i actually really enjoyed playing the game just because i like the controls of the game the way that you move as link and and the way that you have to fight enemies the combat and all that honestly you're like one of my favorite zelda games yeah I, I absolutely love it but the problem with this randomizer is that it is not beatable straight up i mean it's not and i've actually explored quite a bit and and what happens is um they actually randomize the tiles in on the overworld map Oh, goodness. So the problem, and, and of course, there's still an algorithm that goes into it. But the problem is I've gotten into a situation where I can't get to get to whichever town has the jump spell because it's not on that the continent that I'm on. You know, there's two continents in, right. in Zelda 2. Yeah. I can't. And, and even though I have the raft and even though I have the water walking boots, there isn't any space that I can actually walk over to get to the other continent. I can't, I can't get the jump. And then when I go, like I've only been able to beat one dungeon because in one of them, if you don't have the jump spell, you literally can't jump high enough to get to the right part inside that dungeon oh, to get no. to the boss. And in another one, um, I couldn't beat the iron, iron knuckle because in order to, to beat iron knuckle, you have to have the down thrust ability, which is in a town, but I can't get to. Right. So there's little things like that. Like I've actually been able to make progress in the game and I'm leveling up and I'm, I'm, you know, felt like I had a lot of accomplishment. And then I, I started realizing as I was going around the, the continent that I was on, it was way too small. So like, for example, I, I got the, um, the hammer that allows you to destroy the big boulder and when I destroyed it and then I walked past it, there, the path dead-ended into a mountain, and that was it. It wasn't actually, it wasn't actually blocking anything useful. Or, you know, that there was a, there's a really, really long bridge where you have to go through this really difficult segment yeah. of, you know, battle. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Nick, if you've played. Anyone who's played the game knows, knows this. It's really frustrating. They have those bubbles that, like, float up and hurt you and all these powerful enemies. Well... I finally got all the way through the bridge thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm now in this great place now. No, it was this small area that didn't really have anything that I needed. That's hilarious. And so it kind of it kind of killed almost, the experience a little bit. It's almost funny, though, because like... It is, no, it is actually. The degree of randomness and like... And it, I, think, I think the randomizer idea works better for Zelda 1 because it's a less linear game. Right. Zelda 2, right. like you, can, you can't really do the dungeons in whatever order you want. You have to no. go. You have to go in a specific order. Mm-hmm. Um, and they designed them that way. I mean, you have to do, like, you can't get to some of the dungeons because of uh, not having certain items, particularly the ones of the other continent, but also there are certain spells that you have to have to get past certain areas and dungeons. Yeah, so not, or only, certain techniques. not only do you have to do the dungeons in a certain order, but you also have to go to villages and do things in right. a certain order. It's, right. it's more like the later Zelda games, except they just direct you less. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, think, I think what would work better for that is um, basically just having some sort of way to randomize the a quest or like if you can randomize the overworld and also uh make it so that you can have a new type of quest that don't you don't need to go to town a then town b then town c mm -hmm. maybe w w maybe the town that was originally town a uh is you know town e now right you know what i mean and, and i think i think the difficulty here is that unlike the original zelda um you kind in order to to make make things move around in the overworld you actually do have to move the tiles around yeah. whereas you don't have to do that in the original zelda because they were all secrets like you burn a bush mm -hmm. or you bomb something or you see like an entrance to what looks like it could be a dungeon well okay this time it's not a dungeon all right, right so that works but in this one it's an you're on this overworld map and you see what looks like a temple and when you step into it it is a temple it has to be yeah. right that's how the game functions or like you see like a yeah, forest yeah. it's a forest so you kind of have to jumble it up, but when you do that, you introduce all these these this weirdness. Like, um, you you've blocked off a path with a little um, boulder, and yet or the big boulder, but it doesn't actually take you anywhere interesting. So I'm gonna actually try again and see if you know try a couple other seeds and see if there's a way to kind of salvage this experience for Zelda Two. But um, I might just go back to playing actually made 
ROM hacks because at least then someone's gone in and taken the yeah. time to sort of put their own touch on it. I think it works better. Like you're saying, Nick, I think the original Legend of Zelda did a better job with this concept or is able to do a better job in right. terms of randomizing mm-hmm. just because of how the game is. Yeah, this kind of speaks to some of the challenges of procedural generation in general. It really does, um, yeah. And we've talked about this before, so we won't dive into it right now, but um, it seems like you know Zelda 1 is taking better to it. And so you have to think about either when you're adapting something into kind of being procedural as these are, or when you're designing something procedural in the first place, where is it? What what are the points at which you know this thing has to happen around this time in order to enable the rest of the game? Mm-hmm. Um, it can't be purely random, right? I mean, one of the things I did like about some of the some of the randomness of the Zelda one was that I I went into a dungeon and I hadn't found the whistle yet because I hadn't found a dungeon that had the whistle item in it. But the boss of that dungeon was Dig Dogger, which you cannot kill unless you have the whistle. So little things like that are kind of interesting because then it makes you go out and search the world in a different place for the item that you can come back and then win, which is kind of, you know, like a doors and keys concept, which would work pretty well, except for the fact that I was able to get the heart container off of some random room. So I never actually have to go back into that dungeon to kill Dick so, Dogger, so unless Ze- I want to. The Zelda 1 randomizer, it doesn't change the the order of the tiles in the overworld, does it? It just changes no. what doors go to what rooms? Yes. Okay. And it also changes um, the... It doesn't change the shape of the dungeons either, but it right. changes what's in the dungeons. Yeah. So, like, what what might be in that particular space, but it right. uses the same palette colors unless you tell it not to. Oh, interesting. So you, can, hmm. you can customize it quite a bit. That's what I like about both of them. They both have a customizer that you can run. So, um, it is, it's worth experimenting if you like going back and playing old games. They have actually done the same thing with um, Link to the Past, the third one on Super Nintendo. Hmm. And the person who did the Zelda um, randomizer also did Metroid. And there's also a Super Metroid one as well. So these are out there. This is something in the community, like Nick was saying, there are actually actually Twitch streams. In fact, the um, both the Zelda and Zelda 2, they've actually had tournaments where people have to go through and like see how far they can get or <laughs> win within a certain length of time. With over the in, same seed? Yes, they all seed? use the same seed, yeah. yeah. And it's like over in uh, Switzerland, I believe, they had like an actual tournament for this. That's really so cool. So it's kind of interesting. And it's, it's definitely something that's kind of catching on as, as, as an interesting um, kind of novelty. But um, it's, it's, it's definitely worth trying if you're into classic games it's been long enough since i've played zelda one that i might i might give it a shot yeah i can tell you right now i would hate it but it's not for the reasons that you're thinking probably Mm. it comes down to this one of the 10 commandments if you will um hall's 10 commandments of video game design is it's never us versus them right meaning the developer um and in this case they're uh, I would argue there because there's not a curator of the experience, that partnership that we all engage with, that that moment where you're like, oh, I see what you guys did there. That's really <laughs> clever. And I've outsmarted your trick or your trap or your whatever. Stealing that from me as a player would make the game literally unfun and unplayable for me. Um, even if it was beatable, mm-hmm. the algorithm was beatable, um, I would it would steal my fun so hard that I would not be able to play it. Yeah, when yeah. it when it comes to exploration games, um uh it definitely has to be like a crafted experience, a crafted world. Yep. That's um, exactly what I'm saying. And I think what happens when you do a Zelda randomizer like this is it it becomes a different game. It's no longer an explanation game. It's more like a challenge game for experienced yes. Zelda players. Oh, well yes. said. And, well said. And Nick. that's and I, I completely agree. And that is what it is. And I, I actually uh, kind of agree with your assessment too, Doc. That it it does really get frustrating, especially if you're thinking of it as oh, this is another Zelda game, which is what I started thinking of it when I first started playing. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't having a good time. So it really is more like what Nick is talking about, where it's a challenge for experienced uh-huh. Zelda players. And I can see the fun in that, but it's not for me. I, sure. I think one thing that the randomization can actually do really interestingly, though, is come up with situations that kind of um, uh, subvert expectations uh, unintentionally because it's random. But um, I always go back to this uh, example I'm draw- totally drawing a blank on all the names here, but in Demon Souls, uh, there's a boss that when you get to it, it just lies down and dies, and that's all <laughs> that happens. It just dies. I think it has some dialogue, and then it dies, and that's it. And little things like that make exploration games really interesting to me because it's it's stuff that you wouldn't expect. It's like little moments, little stories that yeah. that stick out in your mind well, and obviously that example is a scripted event so right it, yeah it makes the case that you're making very very well that, yeah. that is a scripted event but i think what's interesting about the randomizer thing is you know jim's whole experience with going through the rigmarole of breaking the boulder and then finding nothing on the other side 
bad game design yeah but funny you know a, a, a memorable moment uh, well i would argue no game design actually. oh I, I, yeah and i would and i would say that the the boulder one was not was kind of funny but going through that long bridge segment which is really torturous oh, yeah. and then at the very end of it finding nothing that wasn't funny uh yeah. i turned the game off at that point <laughs> yeah, that was it. when i quit <laughs> it's been 30 years since i played that game and i remember that segment it it when you get across it you have to go there and you actually get a payoff yeah. there's a reason you yeah. know you, there's a reason to go there here no reason that's yeah. hilarious the bridge, it's just random it just randomly plays the bridge the bridge and the thunderbird were my two least favorite parts of that game <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, this brings into mind uh, a discussion we could have about um, the sort of randomness of life and the world and existence versus <laughs> games, which are a very designed experience. So like you go through something challenging and there's a payoff. That's not always the case in real life. So it's very artful in that sense but that doesn't make it a good oh yeah game to everyone's had that experience you're on a road trip you see something that looks interesting you know oh and in 40 miles there's you know the world's best so-and-so and you're like cool i'm gonna just take this detour and just check it out mm. it's only 40 miles <laughs> and then you get there and it's like the worst experience ever you just wasted all this time or you know you go through like four years of college and then can't find a job and have student loan debt and uh no, that would never happen. That, that, that's that's too f fanciful for well, us. Well, the, the funny thing is that in art, whenever there's a lesson like that, if you work hard and get nothing, the payoff is always that lesson. Yeah. yeah. In this game, the payoff is just, oops, you found a mountain. <laughs> experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Yeah. Unless what you wanted was experience. Right. Existentialism. Woo! This is the Gaming Meta. News and commentary about the games industry and gamer culture. So for our Thanksgiving special, I talked a little bit about the Overwatch League, which, uh, you know, it's not the first esports league in existence. Uh, esports have been a thing that's been organized for a while. Um, but what intrigued me about it was that it's um, something put on specifically by, well, I guess technically other stuff has been, but it, it's, it's a league that's really emulating sports as we already know them. Uh, so you've got geographically based teams uh, that sort of go through, uh, you know, a regular season and then playoffs and then a tournament um, or, uh, you know, you have a championship at the end. And so um, I was very intrigued by that to see if that starts to move esports more into a mainstream sort of uh, consumer base. Uh, so another one that's doing this uh, that I heard about recently is NBA 2K League. Um, now, this is going to oh, be really? actually a partnership between the National Basketball Association who licenses NBA 2K, the series. So hmm. them and 2K Entertainment. And... Um, and are there, are there, I'm assuming they're playing the new game, 2K18. Yes. Yeah, yeah, each year they're going to be playing the newest or the newest upcoming version or something like that. I think so. The first season happening in 2018 is going to be 2K18, if I remember correctly. Um, and what's neat about this is the way they're doing it. It's not just like you've got you know a player or two who's controlling the whole squad of five. You've actually got a squad of five players each controlling their own custom avatar character. Um, yeah, and that's that's how you play also on uh, like the playground mm -hmm. in uh, NBA 2K because mm -hmm. I've, I've played some of the uh, some of that space as well, mm -hmm. and it's it's a, definitely an interesting experience and mm -hmm. different from what you would expect. Mm -hmm. In a lot of the other game, I think um, was it. I think it might have been two K sixteen. They introduced the pro am mode, which was basically that same idea, but mm -hmm. sort of taken up to a more competitive level. Right, um, right. And and, and they've been doing it since then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, I, from what I understand, this is more or less kind of like just the next take on the pro am mode. Um, but what's really interesting about it is because it's actually the the league is going to be run both by the NBA and two K collaboratively. Um, each of the teams is going to be associated with a different NBA team. That team is actually going to own own the esports team so for example um mavs gaming is the one that's going to be based in dallas and it's going to be owned by the dallas mavericks well, so let me ask you this though um in do they actually give you a personalized character like do you create your own personalized character and then they give you 99 rank do you have to actually rank it up i'm curious about that i don't know because if you have to rank it up that's horrible mm -hmm. that's a horrible no no experience. there's just microtransactions and they'll allow you to do <laughs> it well there are there are in the actual game correct so that's why i'm kind of and i'm mm -hmm. sure they would probably do that i would assume that basically what we're going to see and again i don't know how exactly this is going to mm -hmm. work but it is your sort of like my my avatar characters and so my assumption is that for you to be able to be drafted for these teams, there's actually going to be a draft um, where people are going to get picked and signed to these different teams in the league. Okay, so they're um, so they're not they're not choosing who's in the league. It's not like mm -hmm. these these are players that we assume are, that we know are top players. Mm -hmm. We've picked them to be on our team, and mm -hmm. therefore we're going to outfit you with. Mm -hmm. In a real sports team, mm -hmm. we're going to give you a jersey. We're mm -hmm. going to give you a, tr a place that you can train, stuff like that. We're yeah. going to give you uniforms and all that, mm -hmm. equipment. This is no. You bring all your own stuff, essentially. So you're and, you're bringing your 
um, you're my player, mm-hmm. you're, and you're leveling it up yourself. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? That's or what it sounds like. Do you think? Quite possibly. And again, I don't know the details. Um, it's also possible that the team will pay, or they'll sort of sort of like hand wave, like, yeah, we're going to assume that everyone's going to have maxed out stats or something like that. That's, now, that's what I would do. It sounds like a much more level playing. It's field. just, I, and I, that's why I was asking mm-hmm. because it's it. There's a difference between somebody that, you know, and it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. Somebody that's like an 88 or even like a 90. Mm-hmm. You know, that difference there, there's a difference there, but then there's between that and like a 99, mm-hmm. that's a pretty big, that's, that's like, like a, a noticeable difference, but not a huge difference. Mm-hmm. But the time that it takes to go from 90 to mm-hmm. 99 is like absurd. Mm-hmm. Like it's extremely long. And people have commented too, saying that this is going to be like these players who get signed to these teams, this is going to be their full-time job. So they're going to be spending um, like as much time as a regular basketball team might practicing together and training and playing the game. Um and so I think that, uh, you know, I, I'm, we're probably going to see people at maxed out stats, whether it is because they just give it to them or because they work their way up because they have the time to. Um, but of course, when you pick your position for your player at the beginning of your my career, um, there are like they, they sort of change it. So like, you know, if you're a three point specialist, you're going to be really good at shooting, but maybe not the greatest at ball handling, that sort of Actually, thing. Actually, and yeah, that was the other thing I was going to ask you about. So in addition to because I played a lot of NBA 2K18 mm-hmm. um, and in addition to having to level up your character, you also have to unlock badges mm-hmm. in order to make to to get extra like kind of quirks or techniques for your for your character. Mm-hmm. That also takes a lot of time. So yeah. are they also going to expect all of these people to unlock all of these badges? Because you say that it, they, they roll over to the new game every season. Well, guess what? New game comes out. They're all starting at the beginning again mm-hmm. with no badges. With no, So you can say, oh, well, you know, the pros are doing this full time. Well, that's great. It's still going to take them several weeks mm-hmm. to get everything. Sure. You know, not just to 99, that, but also why, all the badges. So mm-hmm. why not just give them and that way give them what they need mm-hmm. to, to perform? Yeah. Just like how a real sports team, mm-hmm. you know, you, you when you pick someone for your team, mm-hmm. you don't sign somebody that is, you know, basically a Bush League player and mm-hmm. then you expect them to get better while they're on your team. No, you sign someone who's already good. Yeah. And then th- then they take it from there. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see how they handle it. But my guess is going to be that, yes, we're just going to like we're going to assume that your character's maxed out. You have everything um, that you can. And then it's just going to be about right. how you play. And of course, it's like you said, it's different for positions, mm-hmm. too. So it's not like. You're going to have every Wednesday every stat max. Of course yeah. not. It's just you might be level 99, like it would your mm-hmm. that'd be your overall rating. But mm-hmm. you're not going to have ni- like every stat's not going to be max because you can't do that. Different positions like mm-hmm. the center versus the point guard are going to have different stats that right. they excel at. Size and weight play a big role in 2K. Um, sure, yeah. like you can't have. Um, a really nimble seven foot, like 250 pound <laughs> center being your point guard or something like that. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't go very well. Probably. The thing that might cause problems though is that because this is a video game there might be some degree of min maxing and how people level there might just be one optimal build that has the perfect balance of everything well, actually people wouldn't do that yeah and actually that, that's already happened people have actually found um the different like the best builds for each position mm-hmm. and they've also kind of looked at okay if you want to if you want to play this type of player then you need to do this position with you know these specialties because you know like like chris was alluding to before you you, you pick specialties as well like you're like um you know a three-point specialist and a mm-hmm. um I, I forget all of them a, now. a scoring guard yeah score um, stuff like that like mm-hmm. they have all these little like like and you choose and you mm-hmm. get to pick two like one's kind of your major one and then one's like your your minor one isn't that kind of how it is uh, like that. not in the exactly. one that i played on um, the one i played i basically just picked like what's my configuration right but there was there was two wasn't there i thought there was two things that you pick and not, then the combination of them gives you like a unique name based on the position right i haven't well, played anyway, for a few years oh, okay so the point is that there's an optimal build right yes yeah. exactly yes no i, I was talking about 2k 2k18 because right. i actually i have it and i've played and it so. speaking of optimal builds too i think that you know in the same way that um I'm, I'm more familiar i'm not super familiar but i'm more familiar with say overwatch competitive than i am 2k competitive so i couldn't can't speak to it quite as well as i could overwatch but you know the developers keep an eye on the pro scene and also factoring in that like not everyone's professional but they'll balance characters over time when they find out that like oh there's a dominant strategy here we're going to adjust things to level the playing field so and while that sounds interesting there's a there's a big problem there versus something like say overwatch because Mm -hmm. when when they start adjusting so that it's not you know one sort of character doesn't dominate Mm -hmm. people can change they can go okay i want to try this out now i want to try this new strategy well the the meta shifts yes but you can't do that 
in NBA 2K because mm-hmm. it's gonna t- it it will take you so long to get to level 99 mm-hmm. and to get all your badges. You can't just go at the end of that. Oh well, now this character that I spent all this time building up sucks. Mm-hmm. I got to start. It, I have to create a new one. You can do that, but it's gonna take you an absurd amount of time. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's kind of a different dynamic there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there's only so much you can change about the rules of basketball, too. <laughs> but in these sort of games, there's a lot. Like, I mean, Chris mentions uh, strength. That's something that's right. kind of, like, in some 2K games, it doesn't matter as much. And and actually, in 2K18, there were a lot of complaints because of the way that um, centers could be so dominant in terms, mm-hmm. of, in terms of strength. And yet, also, are, are more agile than you would expect them to be. So it's like they're they're they were a little bit broken for a while. I don't know if yeah. that's been fixed, mm-hmm. but that that gives people the ability. Okay, well, maybe I don't want to make a center, but maybe I'll make like a really tall character, um, you know, like a power forward or something that's really really tall, just to kind of take advantage of this like strength and still keeping a lot of my agility and still able to do a lot of these you know mm-hmm. dribble moves and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times the in in this sort of case where it's a simulation game, um, a lot of the tweaks you make to the game are to bring it closer and closer to reality. Sure, but but we're talking about a tournament here though so this is different so this is not we're we're moving away from the simulation space and instead we're in a competitive space Mm -hmm. and in that space um the goal is you know for it to be competitive but also fair for Mm -hmm. everyone playing right yeah so it's kind of kind of almost like they're they're almost they have these two two kind of separate goals in Mm -hmm. mind it almost feels like Mm -hmm. i don't know i'm I'm interested to see where i'm interested to see where it goes Mm -hmm. i think what they should do is just have a bunch of Esports guys go out and play real basketball, <laughs> and then a bunch of NBA guys go and play like CS:GO or something. <laughs> oh wow! Well, it was kind of funny too, though, is that um, they were in some of the early videos where they're sort of talking about the league. Um, they were talking to some people who uh, are high level NBA 2K players who said they learned how to play real basketball by playing 2K um, because they started. <laughs> oh. They started thinking, not that they're great, but they learned how like to do some of the strategies and that you can, sort of thing. You, you can, can learn strategies and yeah. the rules. And that's, that's what learn, they meant. You can that's learn strategies. Okay. You can learn the rules. You're not going to learn how to actually play. Oh, of course. Yeah, and that's You're that's not what they were dribble, how to shoot. How, that's what they were yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good, Chris. Good. <laughs> It's time for Game Show, where the backward compatible crew play a game show kind of game on their gaming show. What sort of crazy game show challenges in store this week on Game Show? Let's find out right now on Game Show. All right, so we've got several games today, which should be pretty fun. Gather together to play some Christmas, uh, Christmas holiday themed games except not really there's not really a holiday theme but there is a theme to all these games and it's video games the first game that we have is video game password so let me give you all the rules real quick um has anybody seen the game show password by the way of course i'm old okay <laughs> i so, have not um, i'm familiar with the idea youngest. but uh, <laughs> right. we'll need a refresher so essentially what we're going to do and and um we do need a host for this and so normally there'd be a two-on-two team situation so instead what we're going to do is is basically have one person deliver the clue to say say that say chris you're delivering the the clue right so i'm going to give you the password um doc and nick wouldn't know the password they have to guess the password but they can't just throw answers out so first you would say say that we're we're doing doc first and then nick you would give a single word clue it has to only be one word and you can't repeat whatever the password is Mm. so you would give the clue and doc would be able to give one guess that's it just one guess okay and then if you and you only have five seconds to give it you can't just you, know, you just throw a guess out mm-hmm. if you get around the first try you get 10 points Yay. if you get it wrong now nick gets to try but he doesn't have to guess right away you give him another clue mm. same deal same rules one word he's five seconds but of course nick heard whatever you whatever doc guess so are we trying to guess video games here yes okay they're all going to be video or video game related okay i should say basically for every guess that you get wrong the amount of points that you can get is reduced by one Mm. so if it keeps going back and forth eventually it gets down to zero and if there's 10 guesses like if you get it wrong then it's nick's turn if he gets it right he only gets nine points and it keeps going back and forth until you know there's no chance it's down to zero and so then it's just over that round is over does that make sense okay Mm -hmm. we're gonna start out with right think might be an easy one but we'll see the password is sonic 3 and knuckles so let's go so doc hedgehog sonic badger so that's in, that's incorrect so now do you give a different clue to nick rings sonic adventure 
No, incorrect. Two. Sonic Forces. Incorrect. Friend. Tails. Incorrect. Buddies. Original character. <laughs> I'm trying to do not steal. <laughs> Incorrect. Remember that all the clues apply. So yeah, yeah, no. Nick four. Sonic Heroes. Incorrect. What are we down to? Four. Four more guesses. Okay. Fast. Sonic Mania. Incorrect. I might get buzzed on this one. <laughs> Third. Sonic Three and Knuckles. I'll go ahead and count it. Okay, I think it's fair. Whew. I may not, I may not have, but we were all, we were to come down to the we were down to the wire, down to the wire. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you get three points. Both all right. Of you get three points. So see, I tried the two and the four, hoping you'd get the three in between. Uh, uh, that just let us off. Apparently, is. <laughs> um, this time we're going. You're, you can start asking your questions to, I guess, uh, Doc. This time, since last time Chris went first. Okay. The password is Cuphead. So begin when ready. Fifties. L.A. Noir. Incorrect. It was the 40s anyway. <laughs> Cartoon. Cuphead. Yes. Yes. Oh, That's that right. was 30s. That's 30s. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so apparently I don't know anything about Cuphead. <laughs> <laughs> the password is guacamole. Luchador. <laughs> uh, uh, guacamole? Yep. Good. Yes. Nice wow. work. I was nice going, work. I was going to go with Strong Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay. I, I was going to go with Strong Bad, but I figured Jim wouldn't have picked that one. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I knew the game immediately. It just took me a it's second like, to remember uh, the what's name. It called? <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> Doc, um, I believe it's your turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. The password is Super Mario 64. Yoshi. Super Mario World? Incorrect. Bit. I got nothing. <laughs> Upgrade. I don't know. Luigi. Mario 2? Incorrect. 3D. Super Paper Mario. Incorrect. Controller. New Super Mario Brothers U. Incorrect. Number. Super Mario 64. Correct. <laughs> that uh, was hard. <laughs> for, well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make them progress, like, progressively a little more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was progressively difficult. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one where Yoshi came out, right? Uh, no, no, that was that Super, Super Mario, Mario World. World. Oh. Yeah. And actually, Yoshi was an N64 until the DS remake. Oh, yes. well, I failed terribly. And I was thinking then. the same thing. I was like, wait, Yoshi was in that? And I go, oh, yeah, he was in the DS remake. So technically, that's true. He mm-hmm. was in there. Yeah, that's what, that's what threw me off so much. No, uh, sorry. So both Doc and Chris get four points. Uh, the current score is uh, Chris in the lead with 22. Uh, Nick is in second with 21, Mm -hmm. and Doc is in third with seven. We only have two more rounds left, so Doc, you got to start getting them. Okay, I'll do my best. (laughs) Although if Doc gets them very quickly, that means Nick and I both get a lot of points very quickly. Also true, yeah. (laughs) Also true, you might get in trouble. I think at this point you're just sort of deciding which one of them wins. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) The password is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Vampire. Castlevania. Incorrect. Music. I don't know. <laughs> Whip. Uh, Tomb Raider. Incorrect. Uh, daytime. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Correct. Whoa. Oh, How did you get that? <laughs> Vampire and music. Vampire music. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I feel like I was stolen from. So Chris <laughs> is still one point ahead of me. Chris is still one point ahead. And I am way behind. <laughs> okay. This will be the last round. The password is Fire Emblem Awakening. Eugenics. Metal Gear Solid. Parenthood. Uh, Star Trek II Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Swords. I don't know. Tactics. Fallout. Incorrect. Asleep. I don't know. Support. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I have no idea. In for France. eugenics? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Dragons. Dragon Age Inquisition. No. Uh, how many did we down to? Three. Three. Um, magic. Skyrim. No. Anime. Oh, of course I'm not going to get this. <laughs> I have no idea. One final guess. Water. 
Oh, goodness. Um, I, I don't know. The password is Fire Emblem Awakening. There's eugenics oh. in that? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's a okay. joke. Yeah. 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 So, I wouldn't have guessed that. I was some... thinking like some Kojima I game where that. eugenics yeah. is actually a yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I was going for like the yeah. opposite thing with like water and a sleep. And, so, yeah. so those were some pretty good clues, honestly. Mm-hmm. Those were some pretty good clues. Okay. So just the, the like, eugenics thing. Yeah. The, the person most off. likely to get it is you, Jim, uh, because you and I have both played it. That's and, a good point. Yeah. I've played it. Yeah. And I'm not a fan. So So we have we have one more. Um, this is the bonus that round? I'm going to do. This is going to be the bonus round. I'm going to deliver it. This is going to be worth 20 points. I have a chance. So we get 20 guesses. Not really. Uh, yes, sure. <laughs> Technically, if Doc gets it, you still wouldn't I win. I would still lose. Because yeah. you specifically requested that other rounds still count. But you can get respectable back into <laughs> okay. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks. You're, you're, you're playing for honor at this point. So now at this point, I, I, I don't have no respect unless I get this answer. <laughs> okay okay the password is bully oh no this if i if i give you this clue you're gonna get it right away i'm just i'm calling it right now doc is gonna get his 20 points are you ready okay i'm ready i'm ready bullsworth bully ding (laughs) doc's doc has been avenged i'm I'm (laughs) respected who won though uh chris so the, the final score um very quick bonus round flash round uh the final score uh chris with 29 points nick with 28 points and doc with 27 points sweet so, so we're all very close to each other yes. yes gg well played so we're going to move on to the next game show there's more games there's more Hooray. points uh for our next game show our second game show we have a game that uh that we have decided to call super fahrenheit 64 uh the way this game works is it's actually pretty simple so what i will do is i will tell you the name of a game and we're going to go around the circle we'll start with doc so we're going to go around to my right again and i will tell you the name of a game and i will tell you the name of a game that is banned in a particular country i will tell you what that country the country is as well then you will get to either guess or ask one yes no question to try to help you figure out why the game is banned in that country if it goes through all three like if if you you give your three guesses questions whatever and you still don't get it Mm -hmm. then both chris and nick will have a chance to essentially steal and get the points okay um but they don't get any questions. They just have to guess and they only get one guess. Um, also, essentially, because sometimes the reasoning behind the banning is a little bit complex. So if you get it anything close, I'll give it to you, basically. Okay. So we'll, I'll be fair about it. If it's like, yeah, I can kind of see that's, that's sort of like what their reasoning is. then I'll say, sure. So the first game in Malaysia, Pokemon Go is banned for what reason? Doc. Okay. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. Okay, which means bad Asia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind oh, of, you're, you're mixing your languages, but sure. Oh, okay. Shout out to our uh, fans in Malaysia. We love you. Oh, All three okay. of you. And our Spanish speakers who also got that reference. Yeah, there you go. Actually, if we had three Malaysian fans, I'd actually be kind of impressed. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it because of um, the augmented reality feature? No. Okay. But remember, I can only answer yes or no, by the way. Okay. So. Um, is it because of privacy laws well actually let me let me go back uh yeah. technically yes it okay. is because of the augmented okay. reality so yes All right in, sec- in a sense yes my go. second question is it because of privacy concerns no i have to say no okay um does it have to do with traffic wait if i if i ask a third question if you that's, ask that's a third my- question that's okay. it then, then my guess is because of traffic no oh <sighs> Good try. Good okay. try. I think right. you, were, you were getting close to so something So who gets there. to steal first, Nick? Or? Chris gets to steal Chris first. Gets to you steal get first. only one guess, and you have five seconds to make it. Because it allows you to put pictures of Pokemon onto uh, culturally important sites. Oh, good guess, but no. I'm sorry. Incorrect. Nick, chance mm. to steal. Oh, I forgot to mention these are worth 10 points each. Is it because they don't want people going to culturally important sites on mass or in mass? No, I'm sorry. Uh, the, this, the correct answer, uh, specifically, it was banned for promoting the search for power, which leads to gambling. Hmm. I can totally see that. What? <laughs> um, appara- Excuse uh, me? Apparently it was, it was banned by the, um, what is called, this is the translation, uh, the, the federal territory for Muslims. And they say that Pokemon Go promotes, um, a, a search for power that can lead to gambling. 
Okay. Or gambling addiction. All right. How, so, does, how does that connect to the augmented reality feature? Uh, because that was really what, like, that's why I kind of said no at first and then oh. went back and said yes. But I think that it does because that's the whole, basically, that's the whole crux of the game. And mm-hmm. so I think that what they're saying is that because you're, you're going around and you're, like, trying to collect them all in the right. real world, you're, like, trying to amass power or something. Obviously, these people haven't really played the game, but that's my uh, where I assume their mindset they is. It's banned. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So, no Good points one. for that one. Chris, hmm. Fallout 3. Oh, about, I should also mention um, as I go through these, I'm playing fast and loose with the banned concept. Some of these games are games that were banned, but may not be banned anymore, oh, okay. possibly because of either censorship uh, of certain content or because they got an edited version or they got a different version, something like that, right? So I just want to make that very mm-hmm. clear. So, so like Things, there's a different version in the UK rather than in the US, something like that? Sometimes that happens. So okay. I, I want to be clear, like if, if I say this game... Okay, because it's more fun that way. I'm, I right. like to pick the reasons that are. But the sometimes blood is turned to flower petals. Yeah, I guess. Yes, you. there are only so many banned games. Right. So right, and a lot of times games when when companies hear that they're banned, they will intentionally go back and go, no, we want to be in your region, so they'll release like a version specifically for that country. Yeah. So that doesn't have whatever content was considered objectionable. Mm-hmm. Right. So just want to make that clear for anyone listening. It's like that's not true. It's not banned anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's why. So don't <laughs> send me any hate mail for that reason. I've got plenty of other reasons you can send me hate mail. <laughs> you okay. can you can find something to on the gym. to the gym bag <laughs> segment. Of course. Hashtag gym bag. Hashtag gym bag. Okay. Chris, Fallout Three is banned in, in Japan for what reason? Um, atomic bombs. That, is that your guess, or are you asking a question? Um, that is a guess. Okay. Um, if that's your guess, I have to say no. Mm. Okay. I can't, I can't give that to you. Does it have to do with the, no pun intended, fallout of nuclear war? Actually, no. Mm. So you have one more. This one has to be a guess. Mm. Or you can ask a question to help your, you know, other, your competitors. Help your fellow man. <laughs> because you can be the one to set off a nuclear bomb. Or are you asking a question? No, that's a guess. So say it again. You can be the one to set off an atomic bomb. Yeah, I will give you that one. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's why I couldn't give you the first one because mm. you were being specific with mm-hmm. a guess. If you would ask that as a question, like, mm-hmm. does it have to do with mm-hmm. nukes? I would have said yes. Gotcha. Okay. So the, the specific answer, very specific, is specifically because the quest called the power of the atom that mm. allows you to blow up Megaton, yeah. like nuke Megaton. Yeah. Mm. Um, they actually banned the game in Japan for that reason. They later released a version of Fallout 3 in which they not only edited that quest so you could not nuke megaton but they also removed um the um nuke launcher like you have like a weapon the that fat can, man the fat man bought like launcher yeah you, they removed that weapon entirely from the game and, and made it shoot out nuka cola <laughs> that's really hilarious yes. they should actually. actually mod that into the american version because oh, i, I, I oh, play that. bet it's there i bet someone has <laughs> I, that would not surprise me at all okay so chris you got it um the way we'll do this for the points um i because i think it's more fun that way We'll do a 10 point thing if you get it right on the first try. If it takes you all, like, we'll just do the subtracting one. So, because you got it on the third try, it'll be eight. If it goes to the other people, it'll be the same thing. It'll be like seven and six, whoever goes first. So, you get um, eight points. Cool. Um, so, Nick, this will be yours. Okay. Another Fallout game ah. Fallout New Vegas. Um, Fallout New Vegas is banned in the United Arab Emirates for this reason. Arab, United <laughs> Arab, Emirates. Arab. I think it's the pronunciation. Yeah. God, Joe. <laughs> okay. I stand by my pronunciation. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> Send your hate mail to <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Jim. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. You have uh, three guesses, or three questions, or a combination of both. So Fallout New Vegas was banned in the UAE. Yes. Um, For what reason? Does it have something to do with nudity or sexuality? No, it does not. Surprising. Does it have something to do with the depiction of um, Middle Eastern people or Muslims or anything like that? No, it does not. So this one has to be my guess. <clears throat> or you could ask a question. It's still it's up to you. Is it because of the uh, gore that you see in the VATS system? When you blow up somebody's head or something? Nope. All right. Well, I'm done. Um, Doc, your chance to steal. Okay. I'm going to take a guess that it has something to do with um, the Centurions and that it was because of the power structure depicted in, by, by the Centurions. No. Oh. Chris, final guess. Gambling. 
You got it. Oh, nice, well nice done. work. Nice I work. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> How long did you know that answer? The, from the beginning. You knew right from the start yeah. you would have gotten it? Because mm-hmm. it was Vegas and because Well, because you also got the hint from the Malaysian one um, where it was something that led to gambling. So this just straight up had gambling. So True. that was probably uh, it. It does mm-hmm. make sense. Good call. Good yeah. call. Okay. So that would be seven points. Six points. Six points yeah. yeah. Six points. So, Doc, it, it is your turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, recent game just came out. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Mm. is banned in germany oh. for what reason well it's easy nazis the, the depiction of nazis yeah correct yeah you got it that's easy well it, maybe not yeah. some people don't know about yeah. about that and what they do is they actually typically they'll ban they'll ban the new uh, wolfenstein games and then they'll have a special german version that they will make so they can still release it where yeah. they go in and they edit out Nazi it's Nazi symbols. They'll yeah. change characters. Yeah, the swastikas stuff like become that. crosses and stuff. It's, yes. it's illegal to depict the swastika in, in, in Germany. That is so. correct. Which by the way is, is kind of strange that they do that because the game in no way is glorifying Nazis. In fact, the exact opposite. That's making fun of them. But, but... <laughs> I think there's a complicated social reasoning for that law in, in Germany to begin with. And I don't want to pretend to know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have to pretend because I just know everything. Send your hate mail to ch- no. I'm just kidding. Let's not linger getting, on the Nazi yeah, topic. I'm getting too, long, I'm getting too much. I'm getting <laughs> yeah. too much hate mail. I got ten points. I'm happy. Yes, yeah, so you got ten points. Um, okay, I kind of, I did. Admittedly, I did kind of lob you a softball there, but <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, okay, Chris. Call of Duty Black Ops is banned in Cuba. Cuba. For what reason? Okay, I thought all games were banned in Cuba. So no, that's what I know. Actually, no. There's actually quite not that many games that are actually banned in Cuba. Hmm. There's definitely some games that are banned in Cuba. Certainly a lot more than here. But 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 all consoles are banned in Cuba. <laughs> See what I did there? No games, but you yes. can't play any of yes. them. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There was a mission that had to do with the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was a good guess, but no. Mm, that is a good guess. Does it have anything to do with the portrayal of communism? I don't. I'm gonna have to say no. I'm trying to think back to that game because I played it, but it was years ago. Yeah, it's the game from uh, 2010, so it is a little, little old at this point, getting old. Wow, it is old, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Don't end your perfect streak. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a guess and say, um, because there are segments where you can cause harm to civilians. No, incorrect. So I wasn't um, even sure if that was the case in Black Ops, so I was taking a guess. So. Right. <laughs> Nick, you get a chance to steal. Um, is it because... Cuba as a nation is depicted as evil or an enemy or an opponent or something or Cuban soldiers. I will take that as a question and say yes, but it is not the correct answer. Put it that way. But that was my guess. So. Oh, then no. Okay. If we're going to do that. <laughs> Doc. All right. So I'm going to say it's because you can kill Cubans. M- military. Oh, I still can't give that to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Specifically, there is actually a mission where you kill Fidel Castro. Really? Oh. Yes. Well, he's Cuban. I know. That's why I, said oh, I that's couldn't right. quite give it there to him. He's not mission. a Cuban. He is he's he, not a Cuban. Yeah. He's Fidel Castro. And he's, he's also, he's, <laughs> the, he's the dictator as well. So I remember that mission now. Yeah. Ah. It's this very specific. I, I, I Sorry, I had to get it. If you said anything about Castro, I probably would have given it to you. I think the idea in that mission is you um, planted an explosive cigar. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. It's, oh, that's it's, funny. Been, uh, it's been a while since I played it. I only played it when it first came out. Okay. Mm. So no points were earned. Yes. That's an interesting reason. Mm. Now this next one, I'm actually going to give you two games that are banned in this country for the same reason. Ooh. Nick, this mm. is yours. This is going to be our final round of this game in China. Of course. Football manager 2005. <laughs> and Wow, which is which is a uh, football slash soccer management sim, right? And Hearts of Iron, which is a grand strategy game, are both banned for what reason? The exact same reason in both of them. Question: Does it have something to do with microtransactions? No, it does not. Does it have something to do with gambling? No, it does not. Oh man. You have one guess. Oh. <laughs> you burned through those quickly. <laughs> not, not, not bad guesses, though. I'll give you that. Those are the only connection I could possibly see. Um, this is definitely the hardest one. What were the two games again? Football Manager 2005, Hearts of Iron. I've never heard of that one. 
it is a it's a grand strategy game. So in the vein of like civilization. Mm -hmm. Trying to think of weird Chinese laws. <laughs> uh, positive portrayal of capitalism. Not a bad guess, but no. Doc. Because the Chinese team slash faction was completely omitted from both of those games. Not a bad guess, but also incorrect. <sighs> Chris? Acknowledging Hong Kong instead of Chinese Taipei? Wow. Oh, God, I should have thought of that. That is that is so close. Um, it's one either way. However, I can't I can't give it to you. Mm. Essentially, you are kind of correct. It's actually for um, recognizing Tibet and Taiwan oh, okay. as independent nations. That's gotcha. yeah, both that's games, really close. both <laughs> Football Manager two thousand five and Hearts of Iron recognized Taiwan and Tibet as independent nations from China. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect wow. sense. So you were you were on, on you the were right track. totally on the right track yeah, with yeah. Hong, with the Hong Kong guess, mm -hmm. but no, I, I'd have given it to him honestly. <laughs> no, because <laughs> Hong I still Kong, lied. I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> if it was if it was in the past, if it was farther back, but Hong Kong is actually a part. Like it's different. It is its own yeah. thing and part of China and has been kind of like that for a while. So mm -hmm. it's a different situation. Whereas, like t specifically, Taiwan and Tibet have been actually fighting for independence. Right. They're in a very different I for, I situation. Like Hong Kong's mm -hmm. not actually, they're, they're actually not fighting for, like mm -hmm. they're not trying to push mm -hmm. to split or anything like that. I think, I forget which country it was or which um, nation, but the, in the Olympics, actually, like I think Hong Kong has to be Chinese Taipei for like sort of political reasons. Yeah. yeah. So you're actually, you, you're correct. That, that does sound right. Um, so um, winner of game two, Chris with 14 points. Doc, you came in second with 10 points. Nick, you came in third with zero points. Yeah. It's my turn to host. It is. It is now your turn to host. Okay. So this is called, can I quote you on that? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, from list25.com, 25 memorable quotes, memorable quotes in their opinion. In their opinion, yes. From, <laughs> <laughs> from, from video games. Let's, let's just call them popular video games, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to do this in a series of rounds, um, and I'm going to do it a little bit different each time. But um, we're going to start with Jim, and we're going to go around the table, and it's going to be three points, and then possibility to steal for two and then a possibility to steal for one so let's start with this first round i'm going to read read the quote okay i'm going to tell you um what uh who said it and what game it's from and i'm going to leave out a word and so oh so you, you have to finish have the to quote fi finish the quote okay? with, with just one with word just one word okay so glados from portal said this there's no use crying over every blank you just keep on trying until you run out of cake. Uh, mistake? That is correct. So, Jim, you get three points. I wasn't sure if I could get that right, but the rhyme saved me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> they will not all rhyme. I will tell you that right now. Um, all right. I have definitely played that game, though. Mm -hmm. Nick. Yes. Um, the narrator from Fallout 3 says, War, war never blank. Oh, man, this is... <laughs> oh, how do I get the changes? <laughs> yes, that is, that is correct. They will get harder, like right now. Sorry, sorry, Chris. I'm hey, doing these in order. Hey, and Chris, Chris deserves a handicap. Yeah, Chris deserves a handicap. <laughs> Chris is way too good at games. Yeah, totally not. Sorry, I'm going to mangle the name on some of these. Um, this is uh, Anjayal from uh, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Mm, okay, okay. And I think it's Angeal or something. Angeal, yeah, that sounds. You said these were going to be popular games. Well, you know, Ooh. shots fired. He he's played it. Yeah, I've actually played it too. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. You're more important than my blank, but just a little. That is hard. There's a lot of fun words you can stick in that sentence, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gun. Oh, that is incorrect. Mm. Oh. All right, Jim, you can steal. Could, could, could you read it one more time? You're more important than my blank, but just a little. Sword. That is correct. Huh. Two I was points. Gonna, it was down to between sword and gun for me. So, all right. So uh, now we, we're actually back to you, Jim. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the quote, the in, in full, mm -hmm. and then you can tell me um, either who said it or what game it is. Either one would get you the full points. The quote is this: "Only a jackass can change the world." Oh, wow. I actually don't know this one. Um, 
you got to admit, it's a memorable quote. Not really. I don't remember <laughs> it. Um, could you repeat it one more time? I just want... Only a jackass can change the world. Uh, Bard's Tale. Incorrect. I'm just going to take a wild guess and say Duke Nukem. That is incorrect. But I like where you're going with I, it. I think I might know what it is. The now. character, not the game. I think I might know what it is now, <laughs> but go, go ahead. Chris. Uh, GTA 5? No, that is incorrect. Can, can you, I can I guess before you, you do? Go ahead, but for no points. Uh, for no point. Is it Psychonauts? No, okay. actually. Um, <laughs> I just, it, it's like, I should just guess anyway. It's, it's Auron from uh, Final Fantasy X2 or X2 or whatever. Uh, it is. I've never yeah. played yes, that. Yes, the one, the game that everybody's played. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, <laughs> also, these are supposed to be good games. Remember, you said <laughs> they were they were good games. They I were said popular, they were popular games. games. Yeah. Well, still, every lie contains the truth, and every truth contains a lie. I recognize the quote, but I totally. I have no idea. Um, Take a guess. Who said it and what game? Assassin's Creed. Good guess, but no. Ah. Uh, Bioshock? Not correct. Mm. Bioshock Infinite? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so this was Shu from Sudoken 2. Ah. Oh, okay. That's why it sounded familiar. I actually played that game not that long ago, mm, and I go. just I couldn't remember it. All right, Chris? That was a, that was a good one. That's a tough one. Yeah, that was a tough yeah. one. Uh, like I said, I'm just doing these in order. These are like the, the, the last 15 in sure. the list. Um, all right. You were almost a Jill sandwich. Resident Evil? Ah, uh, That is correct. I know. I, I knew nice. it right away, too. Yeah, Barry Damn Burton it. said that in Resident Evil. Uh, yep, there you go. Okay. Um, all right. So then now for this round, you're going to have to tell me uh, not just uh, the game, but also... Who said it? Ah. I need both. Okay. Oh. All right. But I'm Lob doing, me a softball. Lobbing I'm do, it. I'm doing these. <laughs> Lobbing it. Interestingly enough, this right. is a bit of a softball, but I, uh, like I well, said, I, I'm just doing these in order. Uh, assuming, assuming I actually played it, though. Yeah, yeah. so just, okay. just, just blame list25.com. So, if, so if what do I need here? I need the, the character that said it. You need it. the character that said it and the game. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mario. But our princess is in another castle. Um, that was one of the toad retainers because it said multiple times in Super Mario Brothers. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. And it was see, if toad I, from Super technically, Mario. if you had just said toad, it should have been incorrect because toad is a character and toad doesn't say it. It's a different toad retainer. That's each time true. Each castle. That's, That's a, why I specified a toad retainer, even though the list might say toad. Man, it's not this true. list is awful. <laughs> know, yeah. Does the list just say toad? <laughs> it list just says see, toad. Not, unless unless toad right. would just like kind of beat you to the castle every to time. To be fair, the image shows the multiple toads. So the image is more self-aware. Uh, okay. Then good point. Yes. Yeah. Maybe so, he uh, just maybe he's just lumping toads in as they, one toad. They they actually do say in the manual too. They do say toad retainer or mushroom kingdom re mushroom retainer. That's interesting. Yeah. Is that like their title? Yeah, like they're like they're supposed to be a retainer to the the, the throne or oh, something. Okay. Like that. Constable toad. Yeah, constable yeah. Toad. I don't think they call him a constable. <laughs> they, Coordinator. They, I think they call him a constable <laughs> like in later it. games too. Oh really? Um, like specific, Like I think they do. Oh, that sounds that sounds familiar. I was making a joke. Yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> I think they might. Um. Anyway, who said? And in what game? This is for you, Nick. Uh, Requiescat in pace. Ezio from Assassin's Creed 2. That is correct. Um, so uh, far, we've been owning this. this yeah, one. this yeah, this surprisingly. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, I did choose these choose these particular three. I guess you're going you're so, going down the list too, so they're becoming more more like you know. There's something right? to be said more, for that. more memorable. Yeah, I guess uh, arguably. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and I apologize for this one <laughs> in advance, Chris. Coincidental handicap. I yeah. <laughs> I believe love is the only entity that doesn't change over time. Chris is always getting the handicap. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea if you've played this. No clue at all. Um, Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. No. Okay. Uh, could you repeat it one more time? Of course. <laughs> I believe love is the only entity that doesn't change over time. Please your shoot, Larry. <laughs> these are oh, these are really tough. These are, <laughs> that is <laughs> correct. No, 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 no. Um, um, hold on. Love is the only entity. I believe. Can you say it one more time. I believe love is the only entity that doesn't change over time. Baldur's Gate two. Not correct. Oh, and it would have been sorry. It would have been said by I think your name was. Well, doesn't matter now. But correct. There's like an elf yeah. girl that anyway. The elf girl I was from Baldur's Gate. I forgot her name. Yeah, yeah, I think I might know what it is. Um, but, well, too too late now. Or the game. I wouldn't know the character, but. Nick? Just because it's kind of a cheesy line, I'm going to go with Maria from Sonic Adventure 2. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, no. Do, do you think you know the game? For zero points, Chris. Um, <laughs> the Last of Us? 
No. Okay. No. Uh, th- this was Albert from The Legend of Dragoon. Oh, I've never played that game. I have not actually not played yeah. it. Okay, so nobody's played it. I, I actually, when he said that quote... I planned to, to play it at one point, but I never actually did. When he said the quote, my head went to Interstellar. Um, but that's not a game, <laughs> Oh, obviously. okay, yeah. <laughs> nice. There you go. Cheesy lines, Interstellar, it fits. Well, it <laughs> yeah, fits. Okay. All right, so uh, we're back up at the top again. What if with, some with force you, love okay. keeps us together? <laughs> so what, is the, uh, what are the rules for this round? All right, so we're going we're gonna to go back to... Um, the, filling in the rest of the quote, but I am not going to tell you um, what the game is or who said it. Mm. I'm just going to give you the quote and you're going to have to finish it. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is, this is incredibly difficult. Experience has taught me that wishful thinking only leads to blank. Disappointment. That is correct. Mm. Uh, it, that was the prince from the Prince of Persia, yeah. 2008. That said that. Uh, so I will com- be completely honest. Mm-hmm. I wasn't entirely sure what game it was mm-hmm. now that you say it I, mm-hmm. I i does put it together i just picked up based just on the sens- based on the quote sensible, yeah. cool. very based sensible on finish yeah <laughs> very, very i'll be good. totally honest but hey you didn't tell me i had to know the name of no, the game no so. you didn't uh, okay. okay nick mm-hmm. it's much easier to be given a place to belong than to blank this is another one where i have no idea where the game what the game is and i just have to guess based on the quote itself mm-hmm. oh and and by the way this is a, f- a phrase this is not simply okay. one word Oh. Yeah, you need to finish the entire um, phrase. Oh, wow. Yeah, sorry. It is much easier to find, to be given a place to belong than to blank? Yes. Than to make one yourself? That is correct. Oh, wow. That's kind of what I would have guessed, too, yeah. to be honest and, with and you. Yeah, and it's uh, Sitan Uzuki from Xenogears mm. that said this. I actually have not played Xenogears. Someone's probably writing their their hate mail right now. <laughs> yeah, How totally. Dare you? I haven't either, right. so send that to Nick Baggett. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Baggett. <laughs> There's Nick's in my gym bag. Are you ready, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Oh my. That's... We all make choices, but in the end, again, it is a phrase. It sounds familiar. Um, we all make choices, but in the end. We are all the same? Good guess, but that is incorrect. Mm. Over to you, Jim. Uh, could you steal. read it again? We all make choices, but in the end... We all make choices, but in the end, we are bound by fate. No, I guess so. I like I like I like where you're going with <laughs> yeah. that. Nice, nice. Nick, we all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. That is correct. Ah, nice. Do you know who said it? No. Okay, but my line sounded so much more poetic. I know, right? <laughs> uh, would Would it help if I said a man chooses? Ah, uh, Bioshock. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andrew Ryan uh, from. Bioshock. I didn't even remember yeah. that quote. Yeah. To be honest with you. All right. All right. So this is our, this is our last chance for points here. Should we give a quick tally? Yeah, what is what is our tally? Um, I'm in the lead uh, with 11 points. Uh, Nick, you are second with 10 points. And Chris, you are third with three points. Mm-hmm. All right. Finally, Chris loses the game. <laughs> uh, actually, it's not over yet. It's true. All right, so this is the most difficult he of all. You could just steal all of ours and get his. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it with a blank. You've got to tell me, fill in the blank, and then you've got to tell me what the game is, and then you've got to tell me who said it. For uh, each of those that you say, you get one point. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. This so is going to be tough. This, this adds so you can up. still get partial points. You can still get partial points. Yes. Okay. So we're starting with you, Jim. Mess with the best, you will blank like the rest. Uh, say it one more time. <laughs> Mess with the best, you will blank like the rest. So I'm going to say, um, I want to say miss. Okay. As the I'm a mess, wait, say, say the, say the mess with the best, you will blank like the rest. You will lose like the rest. I'll say lose. Okay. Um, I'll say it was said by Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is the best. And in and and uh, and Sonic Sonic the Adventure Forces and Knuckles Four right. <laughs> zero points. Okay. All right. Mess with the best, you will blank like the rest, Nick. You will uh, die like the rest. Okay. Can I take that back? You can if you want to. Uh, well, no, because I don't have a better guess. So I'll just go with that. Okay. But I'm going to, for for who said it, one of the Team Rocket people. <laughs> okay. From, in the game, from whichever Pokemon had Team Rocket. Okay, so you got one point. Yeah, that was Die actually like good. The rest. Was Die good. like okay. the rest is correct. All right. Chris, you can actually steal two points here mm-hmm. if you say um, who said it and in what game. Uh, I will just read the quote. Mess with the best, you will die like the rest. Sounds very familiar. Losing is a form of dying. I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> or dying is a form of losing. Yes. Uh, Not if you respawn. It's a different interpretation of ego death. 
I'm going to kick myself when I hear who it actually is. Um, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I, I liked Nick's guess. I thought it might have been <laughs> correct. Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, a good guess. That is incorrect. <laughs> okay, that's everybody, right? It was Duke Nukem from Duke Nukem 3D. Ah, oh. oh. yeah, yeah. Mess with the best, you'll die like the rest. Oh. All right. The problem is that he didn't. They didn't steal that line from They Live, and that's why I didn't. Oh, or, well, or okay. from or from Evil Dead, and that's why well, I didn't you pick it up. Right. We're, we're over to Nick now. Okay. We're over to Nick. Here, here is your, um, here is your your blanked out quote. Blank over here. Ah, oh, I know this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a super softball. Blank over here. Blank over here. Is it a phrase or a word? It's a word. You know what? I probably know it, but my like, it's, there's so many things it could be. Uh, uh, come over here. Okay. Who said it? In what game? Uh, Navi from Ocarina of Time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. I zero figured. zero points. I know. Uh, get over here, Scorpion. Mortal Kombat. Three points. Yeah, I knew. Oh, I've never played. Mortal I knew Kombat. that too. Yeah. I knew that too. Get that over here. Well, this this is gonna kill you because this is oh, literally the on. easiest oh, one. Oh come I on! I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I will wager that Chris will not get three points off of it. Oh, ooh. okay, harsh. All right. What are you wagering? No. Uh, All right. Just a challenge the, right there. The win. All my points that I've earned this game. No, 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 no. no. We're not doing that. <laughs> Chris, he's, I think he's Chris, going to win. He gets no, us. no, he's not. He's oh, going to he lose not? no matter what. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. If I had gotten like, maybe if I got the two points on the last one or the first one, I don't know if that would have been enough or I would have had to yes, get it all it, No, it would have. It yeah. would have been enough. Yeah. Still though, you, this would put you really close. So mm-hmm. you'd be really Respectful. competitive. Yeah. All right. So because this one is so easy, it's a phrase. Okay. All your base blank. Are belong to us cats from um, Zero Wing. Oh, you got it. Three points. I knew that one too, but All that's right. fine. Okay. Man, these last two, I knew exactly what they were yeah, immediately. I couldn't, well, that's because it went uh, to the, the most okay. popular and so, so on and so forth. So, so what's the final score? There is a tie. Really? Ooh. Yes. Um, Should we have a tiebreaker? Well, I knew the other two automatically. We can do that. I have, I have backup questions um, for a tiebreaker. Nick and I have the same score. Mm. Okay. Well, then. Um, you both th- have 11 points. Then I will give, I will give each of you a chance. Uh, to steal or to get three points how about that maybe, maybe for this round we shouldn't have a steal you should just give jim a question if he gets it right if i could get a question if right. i get it right exactly a, okay. a potential to to have up to three points okay oh good and i'm an amazon winner again that's fantastic okay <laughs> jim sure what i want to know jim is are you a bad enough dude to blank um are you a bad enough dude to save the president um that's bad dudes um and it was said by one of the bad dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it actually says game a dialogue, bad dudes. <laughs> okay. However. Uh, yeah. President's daughter. Sorry. President's daughter. The phrase is, are you a bad enough dude to rescue the president? Uh, it depends on the version. I'm pretty sure it said save. Really? Well, yeah. according to uh, list25.com. It is, uh, it is rescue. Are you really going to like save and rescue? If it comes down to it, if it comes down to it, if it comes down to it. So now we'll throw it to Nick. So I get at least two. You get at least two points. Yeah, I think that should count. Um, So so if I get two points, let's go ahead and give it to Jim. Right, exactly. You've blank, haven't you? Oh, is this a phrase or a word? The phrase. You've met a terrible fate, haven't you? Happy mask salesman, Majora's mask. Correct. Nice. Ah, Lame. Woo. Ah, All right. Thank so God that's my favorite. By game. half of a point, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nick wins. I bet I can find a screenshot of it saying save. I bet you can tweet it out and and, and <laughs> do hashtag vindicated Jim. Yeah, vindicated. Now we've got to get Doc vindicated. Back in the... <laughs> okay, fun stuff. Okay, so we have a, our final game of the of the evening. It's uh, we're calling it Elevator Pitch. So how it's going to work is we have a we've gone to the site called the Video Game Name Generator that was found by Chris. Thank you, Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to generate a name, and we're going to come up with a pitch for that game and then present it to the rest of us. It's going to be teams of two. And the way that it's going to work is you're going to have two minutes to kind of talk back and forth, kind of make it a conversation and ad lib the design of this game. So in similar in in typical ad lib rule fashion, you can't like if someone says that the game is about, um, you know, Russian spies, the next person can't 
take that back and say, no, it's not really about Russian spies. It's about something else. They have to go along with it. So you can't, you can't contradict what someone says, but you can add to it yes, and, and yes, put and. clarification on it. So maybe, oh, they're, they're Russian spies, um, but they're also ninja. So you can throw something else in there too. Right. Worth noting that this isn't a, we're going to go off and talk about and come back with the pitch. Correct. It is. We give you the name and you start pitching. And then at the end, we're going to judge points. And then how it will work is that the two people that are not a part of the team will judge. And uh, for in terms of how many points you give, you give however many points you feel like because it's just fun. So I think the team should be Chris and Doc and Nick and Jim because Chris and Doc are already a thing. Oh, wow. Game yeah, design. It's going to be Doc and Kruger versus. <laughs> oh, no. Sure. I feel like we have a reputation to uphold. I'm not sure I'm comfortable um, with this. <laughs> yeah, well, no. So I will need to give you all your first uh, first game here because I've already looked at it because I when I when I clicked on the generate, it was already there. So oh. I can't, I can't do the game myself. Um, so I will give it to uh, doc and Chris. This is your game. Okay. Um, so once I give you all the name of the game, um, then I'll, I'll say that your, your game is, and I'll say the name. And once I say that, go ahead and immediately click the start for the timer. All okay. right. Um, okay. Doc and Chris elderly cricket encounter. Go. So, of course, everyone has heard of A Cricket in Times Square, the classic children's novel. This is a story about uh, that same cricket as an older cricket, uh, no longer in Times Square. And so you're reflecting on... Um it's a little bit like that Sherlock Holmes movie, Mr. Holmes, that came out. It's it's that same cricket in its elder years. Right, right. <laughs> and um, you're sort of exploring the parts of its past, maybe it regrets. Um, it's a very sort of existentialist sort of um, looking back on the old days while still having um, some degree of potency. Like, how has age both improved and um, hindered the cricket? Right. And so it's actually told in flashback. And each, uh, let's call it scene, then impacts the world around you in the present. Present. And so what you do is you end up uh, problem solving or puzzle solving, helping people out. And then whenever you come back into the present world, you have these these memorabilia artifacts um, and how the world has changed from your actions. And of course, the encounter part is important, too, because what's going to happen is there's a branching narrative where depending on how you interact with the cricket, both uh, changing the past to get to, to your to your present, but then the way you react, the way you interact with the cricket is going to determine what becomes of the cricket. Um, does the cricket uh, sort of like revel in its elder years? or in its, in its later days, or is the cricket going to sort of fall into a sort of depression? Right. And so it's really important to understand that seconds. everything is emergent. Um, as you're playing this, the, the story is actually going to be reacting to you, not just as the player, but as the storyteller. And so, um, you know, cricket is not just the character, but it's actually an extended metaphor. <laughs> For life. Mm. And it's iconic, too, because we've all heard the sounds of cricket at, at night, um, right, and just right. like uh, cricket in Times Square. It, it's bringing the natural world into our urban bustle. Yes. Ultimately, it becomes a, a grand metaphor for death. And that was the pitch for... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the pitch for elderly <laughs> cricket encounter. So I beat that suckers. Well, I got to be honest. I, I, I liked your moxie. This sounds like a really interesting story, but I didn't hear enough about the gameplay. Oh, it was a puzzle. Yeah, clearly. Uh, it's it did, struck it me as a walking through. simulator. That's mm-hmm. what it struck me too. That's what I got too. Well, what else would an which I don't, with an elderly cricket which be? I don't I don't consider those games. <laughs> that being said, I disagree. Wow. That being said, I, disagree. I like the story. Mm-hmm. I, I did like the story. I'm going to have to give you all seven. Oh, okay. I'll take seven. Cool. I'm going to give you, you also a seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So right. average, let me do the math here. Okay. Seven. 7.5 <laughs> is how that works out, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So now Jim and I need to do one. All right. Okay. Um, Your game is Android Gnome Slam. Oh, man. Android Gnome Slam is going to be so amazing. Okay. You've heard of Elf Bowling? Well, Gnome Slam is like slam dancing, but with gnomes. Jim? Yeah, and of course, obviously, they're androids. They look like normal gnomes, but but they're robotic. And um, even though you're doing slam dancing, it's actually kind of a mixture of like like a pro wrestling uh, dance combo. So you're 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 dancing together, you know, choreographed choreographed dance, but you're also picking people up, um, doing you know pile drivers, body slams, that kind of thing as part of the slam dance. Yeah, and so because this whole thing is set on the moon, uh, you can adjust the gravity. 
Um, and so as you rank up through Gnome Slam, basically you're going to move from uh, there to Mars and then on out to Jupiter's mm-hmm. moons and, and eventually out of our solar system entirely. And obviously one of the dances they excel at is the robot, which is part of the slam dance. And that's because they're androids. Yeah. And if, if you'll indulge us in just a, a, a little bit of a sidestep, uh, we're also including One in minute. this a, uh, a level designer. Um, and, and, and a whole uh, heat. And so what we're going to be able to do is let the players then create levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we should probably also mention that this game is, is fully playable with the Xbox Connect. So you actually need to do all of the motions for the slams, the slam dancing, the body slam motions. Uh, these all have to be full body movement. Absolutely right. Uh, and for the gnomes themselves, we want them to be completely customizable as well as your character. 30 seconds. Uh, think, you know, kind of a, a luchador sort of uh, garb all the way up through uh, what we would think of as traditional sort of German garb. Yeah. And um, since you're also an android, you can outfit yourself with, you know, a whole bunch of different accoutrements like uh, uh, rocket boots, um, you know, a rocket pack, rocket arms, uh, rocket elbows. Completely unlockable in game. But for those who wish to just uh, pay to win. Of course, we're going to include microtransactions. Oh, definitely. definitely. That's how you make all your money right there. So (laughs) no, we're good. That's it. (laughs) So stop. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> what do you think chris um i'm intrigued by the cross genre uh element of wrestling and dancing <laughs> um, slam dance the connect support i think was a good move um i was sort of picturing like kind of a ddr sort of thing in my head and connect, connect is, is on its way out man well, well but it, i i said connect the, but like that kind of the motion, motion, the motion control, control. Yeah. yeah and that that is how dance games have evolved now it's, it has to be motion control that's it's totally worth doing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so yeah, I thought I thought that element was good. I'm not a big fan of the microtransactions, I have to say. <laughs> what? Well, you don't have to. Use, they're optional. <laughs> the other thing that uh, <laughs> are the you a player head boss or not? <laughs> it, it's, it strikes yeah, you're me. To be an no, I'm, I'm the game designer. The <laughs> oh no wonder. <laughs> it, it strikes me as a um, kind of more of a party game, and so I was a little bit confused by the idea that you're going through multiple levels and customizing your characters along the way. I'm not sure if there's a need for that, given what it sounded like the gameplay was going to be like to me. So, what do you think? How are you rating it? I'll give it a a six oh. for creativity. I'll give it a I'll give it a five. All right, five point five. I almost feel like a different rating system might have been good. Like, oh yeah, we're making it, or like, oh no, we're cutting it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if the rating system really works. Thumbs up, thumbs it's down. It's fine. It's fine. So now me and Chris. Uh, yes. Yeah. Your game is Musical Go Kart King. Okay, so this game, are you familiar with the level in uh, Super Mario Kart, or the Mario Kart 8, rather, where you're writing down a piano and you're playing notes as you as you ride down? This game is basically, you're in a kart race, and every track is a certain type of musical instrument. So, the pipes in a pipe organ, or the... Uh, uh, strings on a guitar, Chris. It's actually a cooperative game. Yeah. Because what happens is you want to make sure you coordinate so different people got on different tracks. And you want to be going at the same pace so that the song kind of all stays together. And a perfect score is going to have the piano part right in sync with the drum part, right in sync with the horns part. Uh, so it's actually more of a cooperative racing game. You're trying to sort of stay on the same pace. Right. And there is a bit of competitive co-op here because, mm-hmm. you know, like a band, you know, the guitarist is always going to want to show off his mm-hmm. skills. The bassist is going to want to get a solo in there, even though he shouldn't. Exactly. The uh, you can as you're racing through the track, you can sort of get more technical with your driving. So uh, people can pull off these cool solos. You can sort of like do a little deviation where you do something really awesome. One you can minute. like do some tricks in midair. Uh, but you can also kind of like yield a little bit and kind of like take a, a, a calmer path so that you can have someone else uh, do a solo. What will happen there's actually a trade off where if everyone's soloing at once, it's all kind of a mess and you're not getting a lot of points. But you can kind of make room for someone else to solo, let them get their points up. Uh, so it's kind of a it's a balance of uh, stealing the spotlight, but not so much that you uh, ruin your own score in the process. Right. And there's there's actually online multiplayer, which means you can have up to 16 people in a single band for big band jazz, 30 uh, symphonic, uh, you know, string groups, stuff like that. And should you uh, have people who go on the same track, uh, whether by accident or on purpose, you have something where the uh, different players can sort of like, you know, one goes to the rest, one goes to the solo, or maybe they both play the same part at the same time on the same track. And it's kind of, there's a little bit of customization. You get to sort of express yourself a little bit through the way you drive through the course. We also have DLC planned, new instrument packs, new uh, car types, you know, stuff like that. Even some licensed music. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Um, 
So I'd actually play that. <laughs> yeah, it, it seemed like an interesting game. It, it felt a little, uh, little, little disjointed. I was a little confused by the it was co-op, but then it's also competitive. Some of that was a little, a little bit confusing. But it sounds interesting. Um, I'm probably gonna have to go six. Yeah, I'm not really sure party games fit into the whole vision of the company, but I like the take that you had. Uh, you know, it's one of the biggest money makers on peripherals was the you know the whole idea of the rock band and sure. and all that kind of a thing. So, uh, you know what? I'm I'm actually going to give it an eight. Oh really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Seven points. All right. So let's have Jim and Chris go first, and then finish with me and Doug. Sure. Sounds good. All right. Your game is called Supreme Chef Interactive. Uh, Supreme Chef Interactive. Well, obviously, this is a cooking game. Um, but what you don't know is that the Supreme Chef isn't just a master of cooking. He's also a master of the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And this is also going to be uh, motion-based. Uh, it's going to be compatible on different platforms. But motion, that's where the interactiveness comes in. So the Supreme Chef is going to have to actually you know, chop things and stir things and put things in ovens. Um, it's really supposed to immerse you into the experience. Right. And of course, when, you, when we say chop things, put things in ovens, we're actually talking about uh, Ninja. Because of course, the, master, the, 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 the Supreme Chef is battling Ninja within different kitchens throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to uh, multitask between fighting off attackers and also uh, cooking your stuff. Now, the of course, you got to you got you to make a three course meal. The supreme part's important, too, because what you're doing is you're serving the elite of the elite across the world. But you're also superior. You are in charge. And you're also protecting them from the ninja. Yeah. See, you know, you're in the kitchen. You're they still got they have to eat, but they also have to be protected from the ninja. Mm -hmm. So 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 really, it's, it's like you're, you're a combination bodyguard and chef. Yes. And some of the ninja are being dispatched by competitive chefs who are trying to take your spot as supreme chef. Right. Um, so it's about you have to prove you're supreme yeah, chef. Yeah, you got to You got to defend your title as a right. And you, you have to basically you have to win with style, but also by producing the best meal and healthiest meal possible. <laughs> uh, because of course, to be a martial artist, you got to like really watch your diet. You know, it's, it's all about uh, the nutrients you put into your body so that you can uh, stay refueled and have the energy to uh, do all the martial arts. Exactly. 25 uh, seconds. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta, uh, carb up, be a little careful with your sugar. Um, so you have a lot of energy to take out the ninja. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, you're serving the elite of the elite in the world. You're serving them healthy foods so that they can stay in power. It's all about keeping the power base uh, on your side. But there's also a little bit of a political game that happens too, or maybe you uh, don't serve something quite as good to someone who you suspect of sending the ninja after you. That was, that was our time. That's all the time. <clears throat> so I like the premise, <laughs> but I'm not seeing much gameplay in your pitch here. I don't really know the action, like how how you actually play, play the yeah, game. Yeah, interactive it's really a, seems it, like a generic. It's an term. it's an action cooking game. We said that. Yeah, but Motion I mean, aren't, you're aren't fighting all, ninja and like cooking as you're fighting them off. Aren't all games interactive by the very nature? So it seems to well, me like yeah, I was just saying motion controls. I mean, we have an entire console that has motion controls. <laughs> That we, for yeah, I mean yeah. pushing buttons. That's that's interactive. Um, but um, this cooking motif, I think, is gold. I think that's I that's pure gold. And the ninjas, yeah, <laughs> ninjas will um, sell, <laughs> sell, 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 sell. So I'm wondering if Supreme <laughs> Chef Ninja might be like a better title. That would be a better for title. what you described. Yeah. Um, but that said, um, I'm comfortable giving this uh, this pitch a seven. I'm going to give it a six. All right, six point five. All right, so final battle. Uh, it's going to be final pitch is going to be Doc and Nick. This is actually a great one, by the way. This <laughs> okay. is a fantastic right. I'm one. Ready. I actually love this one. I'm ready. I wish I had done this one. All right, so uh, your game is Brain Damaged Grizzly Bear Summoner. Okay, so any idiot can summon a grizzly bear, but to summon a brain damaged grizzly bear is th th that is the fun. Yeah. Um, so summoning the grizzly bear, this is of course a fantasy game. You are of course a summoner. Um, you start out with just normal summoning spells where you summon, say dogs or rabbits. Uh, cats, rabbits. Yeah. Um, but as you, as you go further and further and progress through your, your, uh, character, cause this is an RPG, uh, you start getting better spells and gr the brain damaged grizzly bear is of course the most powerful summoning spell. Yeah. There's a legend about the brain damaged grizzly bear, which plays in, um, and it's that only the greatest summoner of all 
can summon the brain damaged grizzly bear. He's he's brain damaged because he's so very old. He's the ancient grizzly. He's so wise that his brain was damaged. And so what you have to do is work through your spell tree and try to get to the point where you can summon uh, the brain damaged animals in sequence, ultimately leaving, leading to the brain damaged grizzly bear. Yes, and as you summon these brain damaged animals, part of the... Uh... <laughs> Part of the challenge and the fun, and this is where the role playing comes through, is you have, you have to talk to each brain damaged animal and get get some piece of wisdom from them. Um, they, they have wisdom walked away, but because they're brain damaged, it's hard to have seconds. a constructive conversation with them. So yeah. you have to choose the right dialogue options to get that key piece so of information. So obviously this is a whimsical game and it's meant to have a sort of a parody element to it and it's a lot of fun. But the truth is that we're juxtaposing the seriousness of these issues right. and it's very much an animal loving game and it's about nature and right. it's about what we're doing to our planet we have so, themes of you know alzheimer's of um you know various mental deficiencies yeah it's a complex metaphor yes um for those who are differently abled um and finally what you discover <laughs> is that you oh time up <laughs> so uh um i will say that the the whole philosophical angle kind of came out of nowhere um but uh it sounds like a really entertaining game. I like the I like the the, the comedy approach. Um, uh, summoning all these brain damaged animals is something new and different, um, and it almost kind of has like an altered beast vibe to it, mixed with you know some summoning. Um, I'm have to go eight. I have some concerns about the juxtaposition of comedy with these serious issues. Um, for a little while before you said to whimsical, be fair, we never really said anything about comedy. Well, you know, no, Doc did say whimsical, whimsical, oh, yeah. whimsical, whimsical parody. Up until the point you said whimsical, I was kind of on board because you were talking about you know having the right conversations to um, kind of work with these animals that had been brain damaged, uh, and so I thought that if it was handled a little bit more delicately, it might actually uh, have some good um, potent. Um, meaning behind it uh, as it is it feels like it's a little bit irreverent um, it's not as bad as uh, say brain damaged humans but of course the animal rights angle might get a little bit muddled so P- I, PETA will not like this game yeah, let's so, just go say that right now well, I, I, don't, I don't mind making game. enemies with PETA <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me I'm going to have to give this one a 5 oh, oh man dude what, okay. is, what is the total 6.5 no for everything well, Which game is getting greenlit? Which game is getting made? It had the highest score, and so it's getting made. Well, two of them. How about we all collectively decide right now? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Oh. Instead of looking at the points. Right. I didn't write down the names. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we did not plan this one out well. I thought it was fun, though, but we yeah, didn't plan was, it out very fun. well. We can come back with this and have a little bit more structure. Sure, sure. Okay. I think we should at some point. Because I think what we started to develop, too, is like each of us had our own way of interpreting things. I know. And I, so, and I also was <laughs> noticing like... Like like when you're pitching I, to so-and-so, right. make sure you say this. I also, <laughs> I also was noticing trends, too, where, for example, I tend to rate everything high. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Chris tends to rate everything low. Tell us which game you think yeah, should be send us, a, send us an email. <laughs> Let us that know who great, won. Yeah. And yeah. then we'll actually make it. No, we won't. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> no. Well, that was a lot of fun. Lots of different uh, games that we played here for this uh, holiday get together. And uh, we hope that those of you who are having holiday get togethers of your own uh, get to have some fun playing various games as well. If by some chance you're uh, playing on your own, then have some fun playing some single player games. Give these games uh, a try and let us know how they went with your friend groups, though. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, let's try it out. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for episode 118 of the backward compatible.com podcast, our holiday special. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. I'm Jim. I'm Doc, and we'll see you next time. We want you to write into the show, because dialogue makes everyone better. If you want to comment on this episode, ask a question, share some info, voice an opinion, or request a topic, send an email to inbox at backward-compatible.com, and we may feature you on a future episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible. Compatible.